What's going on turd nerds? Matt with Operator Mindset here and in today's video we are going to be talking about the all-consuming fear of the math monster, right? When you are about to take your exam, you are so afraid of this math, everyone wants to talk about math, everyone wants to do math problems, and you're sitting over here like, I can't even spell math. I have passed all my exam using the same strategies I'm going to share with you in this video. Number one, we're going to talk about how to change that fear-based mindset, fear of the math, and how it's crippling you before it's e before you even walk in to take your exam, you've already defeated yourself mentally by having this fear-based mindset of the math. We're gonna talk about how to conquer that and how to turn that around. Next, we're gonna share with you those test-taking strategies that I personally have used to pass all of my exams, and hopefully, with all of this knowledge, you will be able to walk in to your next exam and knock it out of the park and walk out of there with a passing grade. So. Let's get into the video, turn nerd out. First thing we need to recognize when you are trying to sit for your exam, whether it's your threes, twos, or ones, there is going to be math on the exam. Shocker, right? I know. I personally cannot tell you how many times I've heard people say, I've heard people complain about, say the math broke me, I, I, I didn't pass because of the math, the math got me in the exam. Guys, Let's talk about that mindset. You go into your first class three wastewater class, right? It's a 40 hour class. You do math every single day. You're being bombarded with so much knowledge of activated sludge, uh, secondary clarifiers, primary clarifiers, preliminary treatment, dewatering. What's a trickling filter, right? It's so much to consume. On top of all of that knowledge, you're being hit by math, 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 right? Everyone in the class freaking out about the math. I'm not going to do the math. I'm just going to skip all that. and I'm not even going to try to answer it. I'm not going to waste my time. Horrible strategies. First thing we're going to do is break down the exam. Your exam is timed. You have three hours to complete the exam once you start. Next, the exam is 110 questions. Ten of those questions do not count. Now, <laughs> let's talk about that. It's not the last 110 that don't count, and it's not the first. You have no idea. I have no idea. The ten questions that do not count on the exam are sprinkled all throughout the exam. Do all 110 questions. Please don't get to number 100 and just stop and think you're done. You're not. Do all 110 questions. Answer them the best you can. You want to always give yourself the best chance of success. And you do that by answering all the questions no matter what, okay? All 110. Now, your score is based off 100 points. So, that being said, let's get into the next thing, which is the math mountain that we're going to call it for this. is not a math monster. He's an okay guy, I promise, all right? The math mountain that everybody sees and oh my gosh, we got to climb it. I don't know if I can make it. It's math. It's math. The math mountain for your class three exam, you're going to have five to eight questions on your class three exam that are going to be math questions. At most, you'll have 10, okay? There's no way for me to guarantee you how much you're going to have. Little Johnny might have five. Susie might have nine, and Brian might have eight. We don't know. The test changes. Every single test you take is going to be different. Every time you go to retake it, it's going to be slightly different. That protects the integrity of the exam. What you can do, though, is you can look at this math mountain, and you can say, I've got this. Let's say you're Brian, and you have eight questions on your exam. We've already discussed it's 110 questions. Subtract 10. Now your score is based off of 100. So if Brian misses all eight math questions, gets them flat wrong, he still tries, but he gets them flat wrong, guess what Brian still has at this moment in time? He's got a 92. So a 92, you got to have a 70 to pass, and you're telling me the math broke you. It's the math's fault that you, you didn't pass. But if you're so good, shouldn't you still walk out of there with a 92? And there it is. Hopefully, the light bulb went off, okay guys? 
the math mountain that everyone fears and everybody focuses on and puts so much effort into, it's really a false summit. The bigger mountain to climb and the bigger mountain that I realized early on is going to be the knowledge and fact-based questions as well as understanding of the process. Those two things, three things really, are going to be the higher mountain to climb than the math. Now don't get me wrong. Should you do all of the math problems? Yes. Should you answer all the math problems? Yes. Should you give the math your absolute best effort every single time? Yes. I am not saying to skip the math, but what I am telling you is quit spending so much time of your studies and your effort and your worrying, worrying about the math, guys. That, as soon as that concept clicks for you, that's going to be your turning point. Once you realize, I need to know more about activated sludge. I need to know how to troubleshoot a trickling filter. I need to know the order of which the process is, whether it's preliminary, secondary, primary, dewatering. How does all this stuff flow together, right? The facts and knowledge-based stuff, guys, those are simple things. Chlorine safety, general safety, those aren't even troubleshooting questions. They shouldn't be. Those are guarantees. Understanding of the process you have, the more knowledge and fact based stuff that you have stored in your head, that's going to carry you so much farther on your exam than knowing all this math broke down ever will. You do need to study for the math. You need to work out some math problems as part of your study material. That should be how you look at this and that's how I personally have gone into every single exam I've ever sat for is gone into it knowing yes I've worked out math problems but I didn't let that consume me. Majority of my studies were put into having the knowledge, knowing the facts, right? Knowing my whole times. Whole times aren't going to change. Whole times are what they are. Now the way they ask you the whole time could try to trip you up but if you know those facts, if you have that knowledge that's stuff you can put down and that's a guaranteed point on the exam. And then the other biggest thing, guys, was understanding the process. I studied the activated sludge process. I read about trickling filters. I studied anaerobic digesters. I consumed that information. That gave me a greater understanding of those processes so when the troubleshooting portions come up on your exam, you can then you draw from that knowledge and all that time you put in studying the processes and that was what's going to help propel you on your exam and give you the best possible chance. Too many people trying to break into this field or who are already in it trying to advance in their careers put so much focus on the math. Try your best at the math but put majority of your study time and focus into understanding the processes and into knowing the knowledge, having the facts, knowing the whole times, all of that's gonna get you so much farther on your exam than worrying and just defeating yourself about this math before you even step foot in the building. So you, that's the mindset we really wanna change is the math, the math, the math. That's a false summit. Your class threes, five to eight, 10 at the most. Class twos, I'd, beg to, I'd say it's probably gonna be seven to 10. You might have 12. Your class one, you're probably going to have at least 15 math questions on there, okay? And no, I don't know what those questions are going to be. I guarantee that. Nobody can. You as the operator have to go into the test confident, knowing, hey, I understand my process. I know a lot of knowledge. I have a lot of the facts. I'm going to be able to give the math the best shot it deserves, but that's when it's time to do the math. The thing I need to know most about is how to operate what I'm operating and have that knowledge and those facts logged away in your mind guys that's what's going to give you the best chance of passing your exam on the first go around and leading to more confidence we're coming into your next one more confidence as an operator after you take the exam and you pass and you become an operator having that knowledge that sticks with you after all that studying it's beneficial right Every plant's different. No one plant is the exact same, but having the general understanding required to pass the exam is going to benefit you greatly as an operator in your future, no matter where you go or where you work. Woof. After that huge just evolution that happened before you, right? You are now truly enlightened. You see the math 
mountain that I've been climbing and this math monster I'm so scared of. It's really not that big, right? The bigger thing to worry about is the knowledge and the understanding of the process. That's gonna get you so much farther on your exam than freaking out about the math, being so scared of it, and not understanding it. I am not a math guru by any means. I hated math. In high school, I didn't like math. I didn't try hard at math. I never liked math. I was the guy, never liked math. Least favorite subject, right? That's pretty much everybody I know. There's a few of us out there. All of you guys, yes, give them a round. Of Math's no big deal. It's easy stuff, right? They get it, they grasp it, and it comes natural to them. And that's great for them. This video is for all you guys that are just like me, who were afraid of the math, who are afraid of the math, and who saw it as this huge, scary thing that you gotta tackle just to keep your job. Some of you guys are going to test for this exam, and your job is on the line. Some of you guys are hoping for a good bump in your pay, right? There's so many of us out there, everyone's situation is different. Using this strategy right here greatly benefited me while taking my exam, and I think I was able to keep my mind from going haywire and letting that fear really consume me. And that strategy is save the math until the end of the exam. Now, if you've ever been to an exam, you've ever sat for one, you understand there's a bookmark portion of the exam. So, when you sit at the exam, they run you through how it works, what buttons to click, and they show you this little button called the bookmark. So, that button, you can bookmark a question, and that then saves it till the end. So, what I do when I sit for every single exam I take is I save the math for the end. When I start my exam, question one, I read the question. If it's a math question, as soon as I see it's going to be a math question, it's going to take me using my formula sheet, my calculator, or even thinking about math, I hit bookmark, next, and I go to question two. And if question two is a math question, bookmark, next. I bookmark every single math question. I want to focus on my facts my knowledge and my understanding of the process. And that's what I'm gonna get out onto my exam first. So, by bookmarking your math questions and waiting to the end, that allows me to stay, stay center focused on just process, just facts, okay? I'm not sitting here trying to do a math problem, figure out which formula, Oh my God, it's taking too long. I'm gonna run out of time. Uh, just skip it for now, I'll come back. Um, okay, now, um, yeah, what was the whole time on BODs? I can't remember, was it eight hours, four to eight hours? I think it might've been eight, or no, was that fecal? I can't remember, oh, just, I'll skip that one too, I'll come back to that one, right? You see how quickly it can just start snowballing and that effect gets greater and greater and now that math monster has consumed you and you're not even thinking straight, okay? Bookmark your math questions till the end of the exam. When I get through all 110 questions, the only ones I have left are my bookmarks. And then I click the skip button. So now you have the next button and you have the skip button. When you click the skip button, it takes you through all of your bookmark questions. And that's what I do. At the end of that 110 questions, I've bookmarked all of the math problems. It could be 15 math problems. It could have been five math problems. Five. Could be, depending on what exam you're taking. Now, I can let all of that process understanding, all of that knowledge, set it down, and I can put on my math hat. And now, Matthew is wearing his math hat. That's what I can focus on, and I'm not worried about running out of time, because now I can check my time, I got plenty of time left, I can work these problems, I can take my time doing them. I don't feel so rushed, like, oh my gosh, I got a whole rest of the test to do. Have I ever bookmarked other questions other than just math? Yes, I have. I've come across a question where it's like, ah, oh, man, I cannot remember which one that is. And I'll bookmark it with hopes that as I go through the exam, another question might answer it or give me that answer. The strategy I have had going into every single exam from my threes to my twos, my laboratory exam, and even my class one operator's exam was I'm saving my math for the last. The first thing I'm worrying about is all of my process troubleshooting, my knowledge, and my facts. I'm gonna get that done and out of the way. That way I can 
focus on the math. I can give the math the best shot I can because it's still points. And I'm not gonna just leave points on the table for anybody, right? I'm gonna give it my best shot. And that's what you need to do. But use the strategy of waiting till the end. That way you don't feel so rushed and consumed and you let your emotions, you let your mind get away from you. And then you walk out of there thinking, man, the math got me. Yeah, in that sense, the math got you. You let it worry you to death and consume you and it beat you before you even completed the exam, okay? Don't let that happen to you. Use these strategies. I hope it helps you in your future. I hope it helps you pass that exam, whether it's your next exam or your first exam, you can do it. Share in the comments, guys, what some of your strategies are, okay? You can't guarantee you're gonna ever see this exact problem on an exam. Go in there with confidence, knowing, hey, I have an understanding of my process I can do this math too, okay? I hope it helps you in your future. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like it, subscribe to the channel, more stuff just like this and everything else wastewater. Good luck to you in your future. Turn it out.